Welcome to the ABC of the Animal Kingdom. Dog Special. Today we will talk about Tibetan Spaniel. She is Ellie, our special guest thanks to Tibi Ellie. Tibetan Spaniel, affectionately known as Tibis, appear in art dating back to 1100 BC, which makes the breed at least 3000 years old, but no one knows for sure how old the breed is. They were bred by monks to be watchdogs for monasteries in Tibet. For centuries, they climbed the walls of monasteries and acted as lookouts, barking to warn them in case anyone approached. They were known as Little Lions, a title of great honor, since lions are considered sacred in Buddhism. The earliest dogs came in a wide range of sizes, often bred by Tibetan villagers as well. Those smaller and more precious were given to the monasteries, where they were probably crossed with the most elegant dogs that arrived as gifts from China. Dogs were often given as gifts to ambassadors and other notables, and dogs from those countries were received in exchange. Thus, the Tibetan Spaniels made their way to the courts of China and Japan, where they undoubtedly interbred with other small Asian dogs. Some experts believe that Chinese royalty crossed the Tibetan Spaniel they received as gifts with their own pugs to produce the Pekingese. But others believe that Tibetan monks developed the Tibetan Spaniel by crossing the Pekingese, which they received as a gift from China, with their own Lhasa Apso, another Tibetan breed. Tibetan Spaniel, as we mentioned before, are originally from Tibet. However, they do not share any common ancestry with the traditional breeds of Spaniels, which were bred to be hunting dogs. They may have adopted this name from Toy Spaniels, as they were offered as diplomatic gifts to royalty and nobility, among whom he became a precious companion. Coming from the French word epagnol which, in the Middle Ages, referred to a companion dog loved by women in the European and Eastern courts. Due to its resemblance to miniature dog versions of the hunting spaniel, such as the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, they have small and somewhat oval head. Its eyes are medium, oval, and expressive. They are dark brown. The muzzle is medium and blunt. Ears are high and a little drooping. The neck is strong and short. Its chest is deep and has a straight back. Their tail is hairy, set high and curved on the back. The legs are short but robust, while their feet are small and with hair between the pads. It has a silky coat of medium length, very soft on the face, and with fringes on the ears, on the back of the legs and on the tail. Males have a thicker coat and a ruff on the neck and shoulders. The colors of this breed can be very varied. Although the most common one is gold, we can find some other colors, such as black, black and tan, cream, red, sable, silver sable, or even white. The Tibetan Spaniel is a small dog that is slightly longer than tall, reaching around 10 inches tall and weighing between 11 and 18 pounds. Their life expectancy is between 12 and 14 years, and required physical activity is low. It is for this reason that they can be perfectly kept in apartments or houses that are not very spacious, as long as we respect the required walks. They need moderate games and walks in their care to prevent overweight and inactivity, which in fact, promote the development of diseases. They do not need their fur trimmed, except for the hair on the bottom of their feet. But it is necessary to brush and comb them a couple of times a week, to avoid tangling, and to remove dead hair, paying special attention to areas with long hair. If you are taking your tibby to a groomer, they should be advised not to cut the hair on the belly or between the legs, known as sanitary trim. 
otherwise they will lick and itch badly. Small dogs have a fast metabolism, which means that they burn energy at a very high rate. With such a small stomach, this implies that they should eat little, but often. Small breed foods are specifically engineered with adequate proportions of key nutrients and smaller feed grains to accommodate smaller mouths. This also stimulates chewing and improves digestion. Both the periodicity of the bats, as well as the need to trim their nails, will depend on the habits of your pet and on whether they remain indoors or outdoors. They are intelligent, calm, curious, loyal, and self-confident. This active and alert little dog is reserved with strangers and absolutely faithful to its loved ones. It can bark quite a bit when performing its watchdog duty. Some of them bark regularly and some do not. But generally, they bark when someone knocks on the door or when they hear or see someone or something unusual. They are not recommended for homes where they will not receive as much attention as they demand or will be left alone for long periods. They usually get along well with other dogs and pets. And they are affectionate and protective of children. But as with any other breed, it is recommended that adults supervise interactions between them. Being very intelligent, docile and loyal dogs, it is easy to train them. These are intelligent dogs that tend to learn quickly and enthusiastically, as long as training is fun. However, if you wait too long to start training them, they may become stubborn, making training challenging. They can excel in dog activities such as agility, nose work, rallying, and obedience. Although they are in overall good health, they are predisposed to some diseases, such as Patella luxation. The patella is a small bone that is housed in a groove located in the femur, at the level of the knee. This is essential for the perfect functioning of the limb. Patella luxation means that the patella comes out of this groove, called the trochlea. Most of the time it comes out towards the knee, which is called a medial dislocation, and in less than 20% it occurs towards the external face, called lateral dislocation. It is a congenital pathology and is due to a misalignment of the limb as a result of poor development. Progressive retinal atrophy PRA, is a degenerative eye disorder. Blindness caused by PRA is a slow process, resulting from the loss of photoreceptors at the back of the eye. This is detectable years before the dog shows signs of blindness. Cherry eye or prolapse of the third eyelid occurs when the membrane under the eyelid that protects and lubricates the eye protrudes or moves behind the eyelid itself, appearing as a reddish mass. It can be treated by surgery. Portosystemic shunt or hepatic shunt, in which the blood flow around and or through the liver is affected. For these reasons, periodic veterinary checkups are especially important for the early detection and prevention of these and other pathologies. Also, as we emphasize in every video, a correct schedule of vaccines and deworming must be maintained to prevent contagious diseases of an infectious or parasitic type. If you love dogs and cats as much as we do, stay tuned on Sundays. We will also post new videos about wild animals and insects every Thursday. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you do not miss any of our incredible videos. If you've learned a lot from this video, give us a like and share it with your friends.